Well, good morning again, YouTube. It is February 6th. We are going to try to get a temporary fuel tank mounted and get this wired in today. This is fuel system's getting a little old. Getting uh, want to get this behind us and maybe even get it started today or tomorrow. So we're also going to try to remove. My father-in-law is here helping. He's going to try to get the rasp bars removed so we can start getting into the thrashing mechanism. So here we go. We're going to begin with some uh, terminals that shrink tube onto the wire. And we have our crimping tool here so we get good crimp and lasting connection. Okay, what I've done now is rewrapped this wiring harness in uh, electrical tape. Uh, that's what they had from 1975. Still has red paint on it in places. So I think it should be sufficient for the next several years. Heading off this way, one of these wires, um, I do believe this one, is if the unit had a fuel gauge. A lot of 300s do not have a fuel gauge. So I think this would have went to the sending unit, the fuel, fuel gauge. So I did, it was sitting there. I've seen other ones sitting there. This wire here heads back. There's a there's an amber light in the tail end of the combine. And you have to cut this when you remove the tail, the housing that goes over the straw walker. So that'll be at a later date. We'll try to reconnect that, get that light working. We're headed down here on our wires that go to our alarm. See, there's some of that red tape. You see how brittle it is. I'll probably rewrap a lot of this. This is our returns uh, for rethrash auger. Has an alarm, and it sounds like a car alarm. If the starts slipping, this springs out and activates this alarm right there. And then you have a cable in the cab where you reset that. A lot of the cables are missing now due to the age. They've broken, things like that. Uh, so I continued my hot wire for the fuel pump down to here. So now we have to get it connected to our connectors and we should be getting close to getting power to our fuel pump. And then we're going to put a temporary tank on and go from there. Okay, after a three hour delay with some people that can't make up their mind, we are back on the combine. Didn't get much done today, but my father-in-law kept at it. Very grateful for his help. He got this board mounted here. He got the boat tank combine recovery fuel tank cleaned out of diesel and brought around the fuel line. We won't need this uh, bulb on here because the pump will be uh, sucking fuel. He got this all plumbed in here. Our wiring crimped and sealed, shrink tube sealed on and so that's good. We're ready to put fuel in the tank, put a battery in the machine and the unit should fire. Might get to that shortly. I was working on the rasp bars because I had to use the hot wrench. He worked on this and he got the most stuff accomplished for us today. Very grateful to Ron for helping. Let's call it a shout out to him because he got the most productivity today. Okay, we have taken the fuel line loose from the carburetor, made sure that the pump is pumping fuel up to the carburetor. We have made sure our pump is working down here. Turn the key on, it starts pumping. We've got a temporary shelf installed. We have our boat tank. I like these for combine and tractor recovery because you can just cut the line, splice it where you need to, get fresh fuel to a carburetor. And the beauty of it is these unhook right here. This is a quick coupler. And um, you can go get some fuel. So we've got about two gallons of fuel in here. Got our lid tight. We've got our priming bulb here. So we know we have fuel to the pump. And we're going to go get ready to start this unit. 
quick update on the original fuel tank. It has been cleaned out and they said there was still a little bit of rust in there. Uh, it was cleaned out with the muriatic acid. They have since put a liner in it and they are waiting a week for that to set without movement so that everything can harden properly. So we'll be picking that up at the end of next week. However, I will not be installing it right away. We will put it on the shelf up there with other parts that are ready because I want to have it off when we change the belts back here on the thrashing mechanism, the bearings behind those big pulleys down there, and so on. Okay, so we're going to choke it here. We're going to make sure we're in neutral. It's a cold start. Uh, first attempt. Here we go. We'll open the throttle up to wide open. like it ain't getting fuel. We know it's pumping up to there. Ooh, there we go. A little bit of a hit there. We're good. Look at that paint burning off of that manifold. Looking good, looking good. So we had some success. The unit runs. Uh, this side, which I was worried about, did not leak, so I'm happy with that. I don't know if this fitting meshes up with this. I thought it would look like a good flare fitting. We're getting some leakage right there running down here. So we gotta get that resolved before we go any further. I may have to take that off and put a barbed fitting in there and uh, just push this hose onto it because I want to be able to eventually drive this over to the main shop and do some metal fabricating, which will be in later videos. I uh, want to get the unit mobile. So that's what we're working towards. It runs well. We've got the engine work done other than putting on the air breather. Uh, that's going to be one of the last things we do because it's going to be in the way of us fixing the variable speed thrashing mechanism over there. 
cleaning it all up. So it's success. We've got to fix a little leak here, get safety concerns. We're running these heaters in the shop. We don't want any problems and uh, move forward. Okay, sweet success. We have our fitting. I don't think it was tight enough. We've got it sealed and it's looking good. We did a test run. There's no fuel leaking out. We've got our gas mopped up down there. We have our tank secured so it can't fall off, cause us any problems. Uh, we won't be moving the combine, but we're going to go up and give it another start. Just look over everything. And uh, we've adjusted the throttle linkage so that we should get a good idle. Okay, up here at the upper end of the motor, we've got the throttle linkage adjusted so that when we're down in idle, the screw is resting here. I don't know if it'll focus in on that or not. There we go. We got everything, no fuel leaks here. So we're gonna go give this another test run. We pulled uh, these wires away. They'll be uh, mounted to the wall here when we're finished. There's a clamp that goes right in here. So that'll be there when we're finished. And so we wanna keep them away from the exhaust. We don't wanna to have to get back into wiring. That's your main battery cable down to your starter. Exhaust is all in. Uh, no leaks. All the water was redone. Water uh, pump, since we were in, we just put a new water pump on right away. Thermostat, new hoses. Massey still has those. Manifold and manifold gaskets, of course. So, pretty excited. We're here and we're going to get ready to start moving through other parts of the combine. We'll probably go to hydraulics next, down here where the reservoir goes. We can run it because we got the pump dismounted. This is what's going to run the pump when it's time. So here we go. So we got sweet success. We're burning off that uh, paint on the manifold <laughs> and uh, looking good. And uh, so I'm glad you came along for this adventure. There's more adventures to come and we are moving right along. So that being said, like, share, subscribe, put your comments down below and Join us next time, and we'll see what the next course of action will be on what we'll start on.